so if you thought section three was fun, hold on for section four. It's extra fun. We're going to be doing a bunch of stuff um, and getting into uh, some stuff that a, a lot of folks find symbolization to be uh, really fun because you get to use um, kind of your creative side alongside your analytical side. So um, this is the communication part of map making. So where we try to take this information and we're thinking about who is going to receive this information and uh, how our symbols are going to communicate that. So as you're developing symbols, you should be thinking about the audience that you're going to be working with that the map is intended for and you want to tailor those symbols to, um, to that audience so that, uh, so that the symbols are legible um, and accessible to the people who are going to be reading the map. Okay, um, so we're going to focus on design principles and whatnot, but we, we really have to get into just like, how do we do this? And so we're kind of going to be here in the, the technical nitty gritty. Um, but when the section is complete, you should be comfortable with the following skills. You should be able to use the symbol selector dialog box um, to choose appropriate symbols for point line and polygon layers. Uh, use the symbology pane. We're going to be in the symbology pane a bunch to refine symbol formatting. And then we should be able to um, apply symbols based on categories and quantities found in the attributes table. So that gets more and more exciting. And then uh, we're also going to do a little bit with labeling. Um, so today we're just going to kind of get a, a, a basic introduction to a broad variety of symbols. Um, and it might feel a little overwhelming because we're going to be throwing a lot at you. Um, know that once you've found the places where these things happen in the software, um, you'll end up spending time on your own kind of digging in with each map you make into, into the symbols. So where, when you know where to find things, um, it's kind of the, the beginning of some self-learning. So, so let's get going with our key questions. So the first question, uh, how can I quickly change the default symbol for a layer on a map? Well, first off, let's go ahead and uh, to answer this, let's go ahead and pull up our section three demo map. I told you we would get into that again. So this is the map that we made during the last demonstration. And it is an ugly map. Um, let me just make sure that we're on the same page here. You should have like a bakery's layer that you pulled off uh, Google My Maps, uh, a hoary marmot um, that we pulled out of a KML file, um, some frog data from uh, a, a spreadsheet with uh, latitude and longitude, um, a run I took into the Eagle Cap Wilderness. Um, all of these labels are ugly. We will, we will be fixing them in section uh, five. Uh, we should also have a state park, a county park, city parks in Spokane County that we added to the map by dragging them or right clicking and adding them to the map. And the idea here is you learned how to add a variety of data to your map from different sources. Um, so, so it's kind of scattered and it's kind of ugly. We'll pull some of this together again. Oh, there's one more, um, there is one more, uh, file that you probably have on here that I don't, uh, don't have highlighted yet. That is that you probably have your wolf pack polygon. So let's go ahead and add that to current map. So you wouldn't have needed to do that. You probably already have that on your map. That's the data that we got from Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. So um, we can go ahead and start with these layers turned off. We're going to look at them one at a time and we're going to be doing some different things with them. Okay, so go ahead and start with them turned off. Um, and the first one, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, yeah, we've got these bakery points. Let's go ahead and turn those on. So they're in two layers and they've got some ugly labels on them, which we'll deal with in a minute. Um, one thing that I haven't taught you yet, when you are panning in the map, when you're using a different tool um, and then you just want to, to pan around in the map, um, you can either hit the explore tool or if you're using any other tool, like let's say I was using select, which we won't get to yet, but I just wanted to pan around in the map, like that doesn't pan around. Um, if I want to pan around, I could hold down just plain old C on the keyboard. You can't see my hands, right? Because you just see the video screen, but I'm holding down C right now and it changes from whatever other tool I'm using. In this case, I'm using select and it changed back to the pan tool so I can pan around. Um, I thought you guys would like that uh, little shortcut there. So I can go back to my explore tool and then I can pan without holding down C. 
but if I'm in any other layer, like I'm in select, I need to hold down. If I hold down C on the keyboard, I can get my pan tool. Okay. Uh, so zooming in here to these bakeries um, around Spokane, um, we're going to talk about symbols. Um, we will deal with uh, names and labeling in section five. So we'll probably bring back this section three demo for sections three, four, and five, because it just gives us lots of opportunities to, to fix ugly things. Um, but here, if I, if I do a right click on the symbol, so I just right clicked on the symbol and it's going to be, give me a quick option to change colors. So if I, let's say that there's a certain color that just reminds me of bakeries. I don't know. I would say yellow because it's like morning and joy. Um, I can do that in uh, just there in the symbol uh, by right clicking on, uh, on the symbol itself. So let's fill that in here. Um, right click. On a symbol patch in the contents, you'll be able to change its color. Yes. But you know what? This ended up kind of ugly, didn't it? Like, because the yellow, it just changed instead of the white. And we still have that blue underneath, which makes it all green, which is not appealing from a bakery standpoint at all. So let's go another step and let's open the symbology pane. All right. I'm going to do that by left clicking, which is just your standard click. I've just opened the symbology pane. I'm going to go ahead and hit the pin on my catalog so it gets out of the way. So now my catalog has been minimized. Um, symbology pane, if I could choose a different symbol for these rather than this big, awkward kind of Google pin symbol, I'm going to look up here in the gallery. So if you, if you just do a standard left click on any symbol, it's going to take you straight to the gallery. And what the gallery is, is, is a, a collection of pre-made symbols. I have no idea if they have something for bakery, but I can do a search here in the window just in case. Probably not, but you know, all right. Um, what if I did something like bread? Like I said, probably not. Usually they have things like um, I could probably get a tree. Yeah, see, I can get trees because those are more often on a map. Um, house, I could get a house. Um, so if I wanted, you know, one of those, apparently I could get a casino and a courthouse. So I could look at the icons to see if any of these icons um, appeal to me. What an icon is, is it's a symbol that um, looks like what you're trying to represent. So a school, a school icon would look like a little school. Um, what's the door icons? What else? House icons, courthouses. So the idea behind an icon is they look like what you're going to represent. Now some disadvantages to icons is they tend to get really busy and make your map look um, busy. Um, and so you can really only have like one or two types of icons on a map and you need to make sure that they're spread out pretty well um, for basic symbols. So, okay, fine. We don't have, we don't have a bakery. So let's take a look at the gallery again. These geometric symbols. So just these simple shapes are usually or often a better bet than icons. If you're going to have very many symbols on the map, um, because they won't be as distracting to uh, the viewer if there's different layers. So just kind of throwing some of that general design advice in as we work through this demo. Um, I think for the bakeries, I don't know. Um, just a plain old circle might be nice. Look at some of these icons though, aquarium. The icons are really fun, but like I said, I get excited about them and then I use them and then it's just like, oh, this is too messy. Um, live music, okay. I'm not gonna get carried away. You can pause, you can get carried away. Um, you know, I might use a star for um, for bakeries. And this star is already yellow, which is kind of nice. So, um, so yeah, I might just go ahead and use a star for these. Um, we'll come back to them in a minute. Of course, you know, save your map, right? Um, all right, so let's go back to the PDF. So we just learned how to right click. Um, you can access the symbology pane by left clicking, L-E-F-T, left clicking the symbol patch for a layer in the contents. So this is how we got um, this is how we just got a symbol color selector. That was a right click and then a left click actually got us into the gallery to start out with. And of course, this uh, figure showing the gallery was for when I was symbolizing, uh, let's see, a polygon. So we got, we get different options in the gallery based on whether we're symbolizing a point, a line or a polygon. Okay. Um, the next piece, let's go ahead and together take a look at the properties. So let's get back into our map here. If I go to properties, so I'm still clicked on my 
my bakery here. If I go to properties, I can change the properties of this star that I'm using. So let's say you can change the symbol, but I don't know, I don't usually change this much because it, it, if you get busy symbols, it just gets messy. So this would make it so that the star was darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. You have to hit apply for that to happen. And this is actually just in gray. So you can see that that's kind of, whoa, stands out. Um, I don't, I don't particularly like that. So I just want a plain old. Uh, and then that's the outline, uh, outline color. What I actually want is just, I liked, I liked that, uh, I liked orange, let's, or that yellow. So I'm gonna apply the yellow. But what I think I'd like to do is, um, this doesn't have an outline and that's fine. The size seems kind of big to me. I'm gonna see what these would look like at like a 10 point. Ten point. This fifteen point is kind of big, and if I hit apply, okay. So that makes them where they feel a little bit more reasonable to me for planning a bike ride. The size of those, um, and you know, maybe they, don't, they maybe they don't stand out great on this on this base map. But we're gonna mess around with things more. I just kind of wanted to show you the basics of uh, of properties. One thing I wanted uh, wanted to note here is in properties here, we've got um, it's symbol appearance, and then we've got layer stuff we're not going to be in these two options um, really at all in this class they're um, they're for making some pretty complex symbols and i think for our needs we're going to go ahead and stick with um, with just the appearance uh, options for the most part um, but know that these are available if you if you have this yearning to make a really unique or a really uh like you have a, a specific symbol in your head and you really feel like you need to create it we would go here but not today um, we're going to be uh, primarily here in this uh, symbol, uh, symbol appearance. Okay, so we just messed around in the properties. We took a look at the gallery, and we know how to get there, um, at least from a click standpoint. Now, um, there's our customize option. Okay, so next piece. Um, what if we want to display more information in our symbols? Okay. So um, what we want to look at first, first off is um, when you want to convey more, uh, more information in your symbols, um, you're going to be using information for the app from the attributes table. So the very first thing that we want to do um, before we work with any of that is to, um, is to take a look at the attributes table. So for our bakeries, if we right click, Come back here, right click on bakeries, and we say, oh, maybe we need to right click on points. Yeah, so we're gonna, because it's a, it's a layer grouping and a layer within that. So we need to right click on the layer itself, and then we're going into the attribute table. Okay, I think we've done this once before, but let's go there into the attribute table. And the attribute table is where we're going to get, let me hit that pin to get that out of the way. It's still there, but it's just collapsed. Um, the attribute table is where we find out what information does this layer have about the features that are in it. And for the bakeries, we just pulled that off Google My Map. So we have a name for the bakeries, and that's nice. And then they're all in the, the folder path, the folder uh, bakeries there. Um, they have a symbol ID, alt mode base, uh, pop-up info. And this is all stuff that would be populated from um, Google Maps. All right, uh, but the most useful piece is this uh, is the name. We will deal with those labels um, a little bit later, okay? Um, when we get to labeling kind of at the end of this section. So they're a little bit ugly. They're sitting out there right now. But what I did want to point out is there's not really anything very interesting to, um, there's not really anything very interesting to, uh, to symbolize these on. So, so for, for the bakeries, it makes a lot of sense just to have a single symbol the same symbol for all of them. Um, if we had information in here, like, uh, let's see, what kind of information might we have about bakeries? Um, like the year the bakery was established, we could have different colors for the different years the bakery were, bakeries were established, and that could be interesting to see which was the oldest bakery, which was the youngest bakery, like in a in a legend. But because we don't have, really have any meaningful information, these, these are best dis displayed using what we call a single symbol. So we checked out the attribute table just to see if there was something more interesting to symbolize them on. 
Um, what I'd like to show you now is if we, if we right click on the layer and we go down to this symbology here. So I just right clicked on the layer name, went down to symbology, selected that. We're gonna open the symbology pane. And when you open the symbology pane here, you're gonna come up with the options for, for how that layer is gonna be symbolized. And so we just symbolized ours based on a single symbol. And that's the default symbolization. When you just pull a layer on in, into GIS, it's gonna show up as a single symbol. But um, there are other options, and those gonna, are gonna include unique values, graduated colors. We're not gonna use bivariate colors because um, there's a lot of nuance there that we're not ready for yet. Uh, unclassed colors, uh, we may use those. Those are just colors that don't, are, do not increase or decrease in their, in their uh, intensity based on the increase or decrease in a number. They're just kind of random colors for each different number. Graduated symbols, which are bigger than a number and our attribute table is bigger. Uh, for example, if we were using uh, how many years each of these bakeries had been open, the oldest bakeries would be could show a larger symbol and the youngest bakery could show a smaller symbol. Or let's say we had a field in the attribute table for bakeries that was um, like volume of goods sold. So you could get a feeling for how big the bakery was and the bigger bakeries could have a larger symbol or in the case of graduated colors, a darker color. Um, and the, the bakeries that did less business could have a smaller symbol or a lighter color. Uh, proportional symbols are gonna work similarly to graduated symbols, except for the size of the symbol is directly, uh, directly linked to the number in the attributes table. Charts, we're gonna look at those. Um, we're not gonna work with uh, heat maps right now, um, but we will take a look at those later. That's a new, newer feature that's kind of fun. Okay, so, um, so we just talked about uh, single symbol uh, symbolization. And um, just to kind of to, to reinforce, um, when you're symbolizing a layer based on just a single symbol, um, it shows you the location of, of, of that feature. And so that's useful just in and of itself. Um, and that's a great place to start our symbolization from. And we can change the color, we can change the shape, shape of that symbol by going into the, uh, into the gallery and into the uh, color pane changer. Um, when we come back um, in the next, next segment, we're going to take a look at um, symbolizing based on more than, uh, more than a single symbol. So we'll look at unique values, graduated colors, etc. So I will see you uh, in part two here shortly.